Hello fellow YouTubers and 3D printing enthusiasts. This is Terrence King, also known as King Rawl or King Rawl 3D on Thingiverse or My Mini Factory. And this is my channel Far From Finish. Today I'm going to be working on a power supply cover for this particular power supply unit. Now this goes to my multi-extruder uh, Prusa Mendel design that I have here and I need to fit this particular power switch in with it also with another addition so this particular power switch I've been operating it with exposed wires which is very dangerous I should have made the power supply cover a long time ago I have to grab it from the sides and flip the switch on otherwise I might get a nasty shock touching those those wires so let's go ahead and unplug that right now so showing you uh, this is my soldering job it's not the best in the world of course it, it, everything is pretty close to each other and uh, one of those solder joints came off one time and uh, was throwing sparks I could have caused a fire with that so always check double check and triple check your soldering jobs uh, it seemed fine at the time but it, somehow it came loose now this particular model of power switch comes with a fuse in the middle and it also came with a spare fuse to in case that one ever burnt out now the light burnout in this one I'm not sure how uh, it burnt out or actually even if it burnt out I'm not sure if it was working or if I even wi wired that properly so don't worry about my wiring it it works for now and I'm happy with it now on to the other part uh, that I'm gonna be adding is gonna be this 12 volt dual USB power outlet now this video is in response to Joel telling the 3d printing nerds request to be able to power a time-lapse camera by his 3D printer. Now this is not going to work for all 3D printers, mostly the riprap style printers that this 12 volt power supply comes with. So uh, pretty much like an ANET A8 or Prusa Mendels. Uh, it will not work with the most current up-to-date uh, Prusa Mendels uh, or Prusa machines because they have switched over to the 24 volt system. But any, any of the 12 volt uh, power supplies this should uh, work with that. Now you might be able to uh, put a resistor or something uh, in the in the wire to uh, lower drop the voltage down to 12 volts, but uh, I'm not even going to try that. I don't work with 24 volt uh, 3D printers, but I'm going to mount this. I'm not going to be utilizing the mounting screws. I'm just going to glue uh, both of these pieces in place. So let's get started on modeling. So I've mocked up everything in Blender. Now here's my switch. I'm going to move it over here to the side and the power supply unit. I'm going to put it on the other side. Now this is actually in reverse to where the wiring goes on my power supply unit. So I've got to make sure that there's enough room for the wires to crisscross uh, through here and make sure that I put everything exactly where they need to go or back where they need to go. Now I want the switch on this side because if I mount it vertical in on my printer that way it's forward facing I don't like the idea of the power supply switch being on the back side of it uh, all I had to do was just uh, make a general box shape on this and then use boolean modifiers to subtract the shapes that I needed to take out for these uh, parts to fit in place so in order that the, the uh, top circle parts of that uh, the power supply, uh, power source of uh, the USB and uh, cigarette lighter type power adapters to go through, they did not stick up far enough uh, through the box, so I had to make a bevel so sort of chamfer on there. And I was having trouble with that, and then I realized that I needed to adjust my scale to one to one to one. So X, Y, and Z all had to be scaled at one uh, instead of the size that it was. During 3D printing, I got a little bit of trouble on my results from this filament. I've had trouble in the past from this filament from the diameter. Uh, it actually went above 2 millimeter diameter and it clogged inside the extruder with an hour left. I also had a lot of splitting, but since I was going to be utilizing this filament as a welding filament anyways, I was able to repair the cracks with that. Now I glued the uh, dual USB power supply uh, uh, piece in place and the power switch in place and wired everything up properly 
in order to show the functionality of this uh, dual USB power unit, I went ahead and mocked up a, a camera mount that I can clip to my print bed. And this is a, a traffic camera that I bought for my vehicle for whenever I'm driving around. Uh, I don't use it very often, but I'm glad it's there just in case. Plug it in. And here's the result. Now, I didn't uh, create the base to be long enough to stick over the side of it, so I have to clip, on, clip it on after I start the print. Now, this particular print is uh, one of my keychains that I've been uh, prototyping. Uh, I made a whole bunch of superheroes uh, and villains and animals, and these are the uh, personal uh, self-defense keychains uh, that everybody was going gaga over a while back. Uh, these are my own uh, versions of those to give people a variety. Uh, I do plan on selling these in my Etsy store if I can uh, get my 3D printers to reliably 3D print them more often. Uh, I do need to recalibrate the dual extruder on this because I had some trouble with the mini extruders. Some of the gears stripped and broke. So I had to take things apart and put them back together. And of course, after you take things off, they're out of calibration. So after I get done with the, my main camera uh, footage, then I'll switch over to the uh, dash cam uh, camera footage. So this particular dash cam that I used, it doesn't have internal memory you actually have to use a micro USB card or a micro SD card and uh, if after it fills the card then it starts deleting and recording over the previous time so I probably only have about two hours worth of recording time on this particular camera depending on what resolution I use now these keychains they they usually take about two hours to 3d print anyway so I'm okay with that Now here's the dash cam footage. Uh, I'm able to, because it's got that view screen on the back, I'm able to get my uh, shot uh, framed just right. Uh, I guess I didn't frame it just exactly right to get the main body of the keychain. I actually had it getting part of the uh, wipe tower, the uh, color change tower on the side over there. Now if this were a wide angle lens type camera, I probably would have had a better shot of it and uh, yeah, you know, got more of the build plate. I also need to uh, redesign the camera mount so that it's off the bed because whenever it homes uh, at the beginning and end of the print, then it knocks the camera off of the build plate itself. That way, if I extend it off of it, then I can home it, leave it mounted, and I won't have to worry about it. And actually, if I uh, mount it to the Y carriage instead of the build plate, then uh, I won't worry about any kind of warping or any heat issues going towards the camera because it's uh... now if you want to see more videos like this and more of my ideas uh, please hit like and don't forget to subscribe to my